Blockchain Week Summit and we are with Bruce Pond, founder of Ocean Protocol, open uh, social protocol which uh, uh, allows exchange of and uh, monetization of uh, data by individuals and businesses. So great to meet you here. My pleasure. So can you tell us about your journey in crypto? How did you get into this industry? Which year was it? Uh, so we started in 2013. Uh, with the idea of putting intellectual property on the blockchain. We were essentially the first project to do an NFT uh, using blockchain technology. Uh, interesting. So how did you discover NFTs back <laughs> that day? I think it was, uh, we did a lot of research on how societies can create economic value. We did a lot of research in terms of copyright and intellectual property. And we saw that blockchain technology was uh, the substrate that could allow for NFTs to happen. Um, in the nine years that we've been now working in blockchain, we've taken this idea forward in many ways, and now we have Ocean Protocol, which uh, tries to monetize data uh, with NFTs, with tokens, uh, and give people the ability to own their data for the very first time. And uh, what did you do before starting Ocean Protocol? Before, uh, I was uh, starting up banks around the world uh, in um, Southeast Asia, in the Middle East, as well as in Eastern Europe. Interesting. So, uh, did uh, you work uh, with the banks uh, push you to see the problems uh, with uh, the data monetization and state regulations? So, so I, I used to build banks around the world. I did about 12 banks mm -hmm. around the world. and. Uh, I saw that it was useful for developing an economic system and a financial system in a place where there wasn't a well-developed financial system. And after I'd done that, I saw that the challenges of our world uh, are moving towards robotics, automation, AI, and that there was much, much less room in the future for people, uh, except for creative work. And for me, creative work is intellectual property, uh, it's copyright, it's anything that you can digitize. Um, and I wanted to have, find a way to allow people to monetize it. And uh, what are the biggest use cases for Ocean Protocol? Uh, what uh, are the main sectors of your activity? I think the, uh, now that we've worked on this for nine years, I think the vision of Ocean is to allow for the monetization of any intellectual property. And that is a, quite a big vision. Um, more down to earth, what does it mean? If you are able to, to have fresh data, coming from the source, from the people. Uh, what you're able to do then is provide analytics on pretty much anything, any economic activity, uh, and that stands to disintermediate any SaaS software tool. It uh, allows for kind of a, a new deal where people anywhere on earth can start earning money based on their health data, their movement data, social graph, all their creative work. And um, this gives everybody on Earth a chance to um, monetize what is truly theirs and, and give up less to platforms like Facebook, to uh, platforms that kind of take their data and serve up ads to them, which might not be very useful. And what is the business model of Ocean Protocol? Ocean Protocol is funded by the community. Uh, when people use our Ocean Market, we take a 0.3% cut that means 99.7% goes back to the people who are selling their data uh, and the services that are making it available. Nice. And uh, as well, a uh, big uh, question is uh, data regulation and uh, compliance with the data regulation. And especially now we are here in Europe, so here are a lot of requirements as for GDPR. Uh, so how does uh, Ocean Protocol ensure this uh, uh, data compliance? Yeah, so our, our core value is to give control and ownership of data back to users. Mm -hmm. And in that way, it's very aligned with GDPR. The, it's very uh, clear how Ocean works with this way. Uh, essentially, people give consent to someone to set up a data union on their behalf. And because they've already given consent, then uh, and they're part of a data union, the data union is the one who grants other companies access to the data. And as long as that stream is uh, well documented, the consent is there, then we're fully compliant with GDPR and it it holds the value of what we what we believe in, which is giving people full control mm -hmm. over how their data is shared, how much money they get, etc. Yeah, so re you really sold uh, for, to the community. And uh, what are the rewards people get for their uh, data? So this is data. this is the next phase we're at. We're we're about to release Ocean V4. It's the fourth level, fourth version of our 
uh, software, which we believe is production ready. Mm -hmm. And this is where we're going to see data being shared, data being published, uh, algorithms and analytics that are now going to be written against that data set, and then to see who's going to be buying it and what it's worth. Uh, we think it's going to be a very economically valuable. We think that the data is going to show a lot of value, uh, and that's just the next hypothesis that we need to test. And uh, how do you ensure security of uh, the data and that uh, no data is leaked? So we have a, we're building a series of tools and integrating a series of tools that preserve privacy. One of which that we built is called Compute to Data, and Compute to Data allows a data union to say which algorithms can run on their data set and which can't. And that gives control to the data owner uh, how the access is made, who uses it, how it's being used. Uh, so, and what do you see the value of both data, blockchain, and cryptocurrency? I think that the blockchain gave uh, the ability for people to use to monetize the data in multiple ways. Number one is ownership via tokens. So you can represent ownership using tokens. Then, because they're tokens, you can also use the tools of DeFi, and that's how you price the tokens. You can put it on AMMs, like Uniswap uh, or Balancer, where these tokens are publicly traded. So if a data set becomes used, if there are algorithms that are valuable on the data set, then the data set and the algorithms rise in value, and people will want maybe to speculate on the value of these data tokens. It, it allows for liquidity of data tokens, a speculation potentially on data tokens, but also the original owner can benefit because they can sell those tokens. Yeah, so how many uses do you have currently? Uh, we have about 120 teams building on Ocean right now. Uh, in terms of the data sets, we have 400 data sets. A lot of those, uh, the onboarding of data sets, we'd, we'd encourage the community to slow down mm -hmm. until we got V4 out. Once V4 is out, we, we think that there's going to be a lot more data sets being published. And can you share some more plans for the development of Ocean Protocol? Yeah, we got a lot of exciting things happening. So with Ocean, after we release V4, probably you know May, June uh, timeframe, then we're going to launch two things, data bounties and data farming. Uh, with data bounties, what that is, is a publisher will bring on a data set and then we'll challenge the community, 40% of our community are data scientists, we'll challenge the community to write algorithms and analytics around the data. It gives it context, it gives it a value, um, and we'll bounty that out. We'll have prizes uh, of about $10,000 for every data set that gets published, um, which we collaborate with. And then on the other side, when there is consumption, when people are using the algorithm, using the data set, uh, we're going to have data farming rewards. Data farming rewards is nothing more than kind of yield farming for the data space. So if you provide liquidity for a token and you stake it in a traditional DeFi world, you get some rewards. In our world, if you stake, if you put data and you publish it, if you put algorithms and you publish it and it gets consumed, you'll get data farming rewards. And so these are two big programs which we think will accelerate adoption and um, and really prove the idea of Ocean Protocol. That's quite interesting. And as well, do you cooperate with any governments or NGOs? Uh, we are uh, a member of several organizations, uh, like the United Nations ITF. Uh, we have worked with central banks in the past. Mm -hmm. We've also worked with other governments, uh, as well as uh, entities like the World Economic Forum, just to share in ideas and to understand what the larger kind of influencers in the in the world are thinking about data and to help them understand the power of Web3 to give people back control of their data. And how do you see the development of uh, regulations worldwide? Uh, which regions do you see the most advanced in terms of crypto regulations? And uh, what response do you see uh, from different countries in terms of data monetization and uh, as well implementation of crypto? So uh, I'll start with the kind of which I think Dubai is moving forward very fast in a very positive way. Open arms, uh, they might be the leading jurisdiction now for crypto overall. But you also have green shoots in places like Portugal, in Singapore, uh, places like Wyoming and Miami, uh, Ecuador, or sorry, El Salvador, sorry. Uh, and so I think crypto is definitely moving forward. On the other side, I think one of some of the biggest challenges we have in the crypto space are 
governments which are scared of what happened with Web2, Facebook, Amazon, all that sort of stuff, um, and they're now trying to get ahead of this by regulating it. And I think that's a, a mistake. I think that the governments don't truly understand this technology, and they're seeing everything like a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. And if they see everything like uh, Bitcoin and potential scams and money laundering, they're missing the 95% use case, which is things like Ocean Protocol, uh, the ability to give people more control over their digital assets, their identity, their social graph. Um, and these are the use cases that we're promoting, and we hope that the legislators, uh, particularly in the European Union, listen to this uh, and learn more before they uh, legislate and, and drive innovation away from Europe. Yeah, so probably governments should look more into current crypto companies and to drive the bigger adoption and uh, all these crypto companies for the benefit of everybody. <laughs> sure, uh, I think that's a great uh, way to end yeah. this. Yeah. Thank you for a great conversation. My pleasure. <laughs>